Hey guys, welcome back to On The Grid. And today we are in race room. We are going to try out the brand new DTM 2020. And we'll also take a run on the new track that was just added uh, about a week ago, Aragon. So we'll uh, take that out. But i uh, been waiting for these cars to, uh, I think it's been, felt like forever. But uh, we have them now. We do have them in a competition. They are not officially released. So we are going to jump over to competitions immediately and get into them. Uh, this last week, there was uh, an update quite a list of changes but some of the biggest things out of this update were all the interior sounds or most of the interior sounds of the cars have been uh, made better so i'm looking forward to seeing what those are uh, so we have here the esports dtm championship let's get in and see what these dtm 2020s are all about so we can go Lausitzring, Monza, and Red Bull. Let's try Lausitzring, which is a classic dtm track car so we have the audi rs Five and the BMW M4. So let's see what liveries we have. Oh, these look great. These look great. I'll do the Timo Glock. Who else do we have? Philip Ang, Marco Whitman, Robert Kubica, uh, Vendelin, Jonathan Aberdeen. Let's go with Timo Glock. So DTM are probably one of my favorite racing series to uh, to to run. Unfortunately, in North America, we don't get access to a lot of DTM. Uh, it's very rare. We might get some replays or some. Uh, just overview of you know the race weekend, but we don't unfortunately get the whole race. So let's go in here quickly. And apparently DRS and all those uh, have been updated in the in the recent update that was just dropped. So let's see. Uh, nothing out of the noise. We'll fix setup. That's fine. We'll leave the force feedback multiplier at the default. First thing I want to do. Let's slow this down. Let's jump at a car view. Get that in neutral. And that's exactly why I love DTM. All right. Let's get going. Make sure the brake bias is good. Uh, it's a bit too far to the front. Bring it back a little bit. A lot of power underneath you, so you gotta just feather this throttle through these corners or you'll be spinning out pretty easily. feels so good let me get that force feedback meter on there let's carry a nice clean line through here even just on the straightaway it's you're still, you're feeling everything come through. Lost a little bit of time in that corner, the final sequence. back to the garage real quick and we'll take out the Audi I'm usually a Mercedes fan but unfortunately that's the seems to be the issue with DTM is they're all dropping out and I believe Audi's gone as of uh, next year yeah pretty sad uh, let's see what do we got here ah, black and red let's try all right <laughs> Let's uh, take a quick look outside. Oh, I 
see what we can do with this car. And I'm not running this in full 3840, I'm trying to make sure that the video is as smooth as possible. But I would definitely run this full res. Feels a bit heavier in the front end. I think the beamer is usually a little bit more nimble through the corners. It's a bit muffled too. I like that. Got a just a bit more of a muted sound. But taking a clean corner through these these long winding turns through here, and then all the way on the gas. All right, get this sequence right, and I'll turn on the force feedback meter so we can see the detail. It's got a very throaty sound to it. It's just nice about the oddies. You can see in the force feedback meter that there, it's not as sharp bit softer detail coming through compared to the Beamer. If this sequence of corner is right, then this is where you can make up a lot of your lost time. Brakes are a bit hot up front. I have to move that brake bias to the back a little bit. Got good time there. So let's go back out. And what I do want to do is let's go do a single event on Aragon. Okay, let's go take the Aragon circuit, which is in Spain. Where are you? Right there. Really nice because you have, you know, all the uh, the different layouts. Yeah, let's do the GP circuit. Why don't we just take the M4 2016, give a comparison to what we just drove for the 2020s. And we'll hear the interior sounds as well because they did update, you know, a lot of the interior sounds for most of the cars. But it's just amazing that they keep supporting this game and keep bringing out content. All right, so we'll see what these are like. Do a three lap race around Aragon and uh, just get a feel for the difference between the 2019, or those actually, sorry, 2016 and 2020 versions of uh, these DTM cars. This is a great track too, uh, you know, I was really surprised to see this come through. I didn't realize they were going to add this. I want to get a DRS uh, in one of these corners so I can hear what the new DRS sounds like. Good track for DTMs as well and GT3s. Trying to remember. 
of this track. It's been so long since I've... The last time I was on this track was in a MotoGP back in... Oh my God, years ago. And what they did do is they actually separated the DRS from the push to pass. So we'll have to try that out. So they did do a really good job of the new 2020 DTMs. It's a nice evolution. get these in a multiplayer race forget AI get it against other real racers and you'll have a blast Take me. I'm gonna take him out in the corner. No, didn't make that one. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, Sector 3 really did an amazing job again of these DTM 2020s. Uh, really looking forward to getting the release of these cars. And um, yeah, uh, it's an instant buy. All right, that was just a quick look at the new DTM 2020s in Race Room and the Aragon track, which was just recently released. So please hit the subscribe button down there, like the video, and we'll catch you guys again soon. All right, take care. Oh, <laughs>